Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. As usual, bad news and good news. Let's go to the bad news at first. Let's zoom in to Liman and you'll see how the picture changes within the time. So just for today, Russian forces were able to get themselves just to the Siversky Donetsk river. Uh, during the daytime they were able to get this vast land. I was sure about this part because there's just the sand and the fields, uh, but I was also sure that our forces could hide in the forest, but it seems like it's not safe for them to be there and to make some sorts of counter attacks. Uh, so we will withdraw, I see it for sure, from all these areas around the river. So we're gonna use this bridge to cross the river and we should destroy it. So actually there are three bridges, the railway bridge, the road bridge and the dam that can easily be also destroyed without the big harm to environment. So the idea now is to use the natural obstacles uh, there and also go to Radio Gorodok. It's the big village suburban of the Slavian city and also occupy this forest. I'm sure that we have our troops there already. But you know this picture isn't good for us because Russian army will be very close to Slavian city. It's here. And of course the city will sustain some of the damage from the shells that they will fire from their artillery system. So it's the closer distance uh, to Slavyansk they will have even closer uh, compared to Izum Slavyansk distance. And if we take this tool ruler and measure the distance from the bridge towards Slavyansk it will give us 11.72 kilometers so around 7 miles very close my friends uh, from the bridges to Slavans so it's kind of tricky and this situation concerns me but from what I can see on uh, that picture uh, as you see over here Russia wasn't able to cross the river all right now let's go to the good news uh, Severodonetsk was under attack this morning last night but we successfully counter attack on this part and let's go to the timeline it was after last night and it is today like that. So Russia was pushed back to the woods and we uh, returned this mirror hotel that they were able to capture. Of course they put lots of forces to capture uh, Severodonetsk and Lysychansk and if we go to Papasna and surroundings you'll see that the Russian army struggles here. They put lots of forces, they wanted to capture probably Bakhmut or this road over here but now they are exhausted, we can see it for the timeline. So it wasn't major change throughout the day uh, other than counterattack of Ukrainian army over here and over here we push them back and they need to go away from the fields because here are just fields open areas that is good for our artillery but here we see that uh, Russia has some of the reserves uh, on this side uh, so motorized brigades panzer regiment regiment it's more than 1000 personnel 1000 soldiers so they can push them and just to go to Bahmut, try to capture the city, try to capture all those roads that are leading to Lysychansk. So this situation here is kind of hard for Ukrainian army, but still I don't see the catastrophic outcome for our troops that continue to fight in Serdonetsk and Lysychansk. So far Russia wasn't able to cross this river of Siversky Donetsk. Then they cross it, okay, I would agree that we should run away from this part, regroup our forces near to Slavyansk and Kramatorsk to withstand uh, Russian aggression, Russian attacks. But if we would go and leave that place for Russia, it means that they have the total control over Lugansk Oblast. Uh, we have also some news from the south, my friends, from here. Ukraine tries to get attack, to start the attack towards Bushkunske, to, towards this village, and Russia was so afraid about uh, that stuff that they launched their aviation today and one of their fighter jets to Hoi 35 was shut down by our old MiG-29. At least our army command confirms that. Uh, there is no change in military map, but you know, the situation was really hard there today and we know it 
from different sources and also from our military command. Finally, some of the good news coming from United States of America. Joe Biden agreed to send us the MLRS, that's the systems that can shoot many rockets far away and very precise. There were some of the speculations about those systems from Western media, Ukrainian media and politicians. They were saying like those systems are cancelled to be delivered to Ukraine because they might be used against Russia on their territory. But as we see today, everything is approved and we are eagerly waiting for those systems to fight against Russian troops here, against Russian army, because now they have advantage over Ukrainian army. And if we have at least 200 or maybe 300 systems of MLRS, of course, we'll have the advantage over Russians. They can fire very long distance and very precise, as I told you. And what Russia sends to fight on their side? Well, old Soviet tanks T-62. T-62s, the production of those cancelled in 1975. That is kind of old school, I would say, and that tank can be destroyed easily even with RPG-7. But nevertheless, those tanks can ride, shoot and fight, so we have to waste our ammunition to fight those and the saddest thing that we also gonna waste our lives of our soldiers so as you can see it's a war my friends bad news good news coming every day thank you my friends for watching this video press the like subscribe to my channel if you can please support me on patreon or paypal and for those who support guys you are awesome thank you so much for supporting me during these hard times because yeah the youtube is the only source of my income <laughs> right now and i wish you a peaceful sky Thank you and have a great time.